Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. And of course, it's uh, Christmas Eve, so happy Christmas Eve. I wasn't actually going to do a video today, but there's some information that I think is really quite important to inform what we do o over the holiday period. Uh, now, before we get to that, let's just look at some information from the Office for National Statistics. So wherever you are, basically this same information is going to apply. It's just that the Office for National Statistics in the UK are fairly proactive and they've collected a lot of data. Um, but in my view, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, you are going to be exposed to Omicron relatively soon. I believe we all are. Now, that could turn out to be very good news, and that's partly what this video is about. But let's look at the data we've got. Office for National Statistics. Data for the 13th of December through to the 19th of December. So this is the most up-to-date information. Now, in England, the percentage of people testing positive for coronavirus, had the whole population been tested, 2.83% of the population of England would have tested positive in this time period, 13th to the 19th of December. That's uh, over one and a half million people in England had COVID during that week. One in 35 people. So you can see the nature of the spread here. In, in London, it was one in 20 people had COVID-19 in that week. This is just huge, huge. We're going to show you that in a minute. This is just huge amounts of people being exposed. And it's actually outcompeting the common cold. It's actually being transmitted more quickly than the common cold. So we're all going to be exposed to this. I really don't see any way around that. So London leading the way, 1 in 20. Wales, it was 1 in 45 in that week. Northern Ireland, 1 in 40. Scotland, 1 in 65 in that week. Now, of course, the key thing is, how is this going to translate into hospitalizations and deaths? Because everyone that becomes infected with Omicron, they're going to develop a level of immunity to it. Some people are going to develop high levels of immunity, some people sadly lower levels of immunity, but this is generating huge amounts of community immunity. So the question is really what is the cost of this immunity? Now here we have, this is the screen I wanted to show you from uh, South Africa. Now, I've just downloaded this from our world in data, new daily deaths uh, from, from COVID-19. So first wave wild type, second wave South Africa beta variant, third wave Delta, fourth wave here's the deaths and it, we're more than a month into this now so it's looking like the death rate in South Africa is remaining low with Omicron this is remarkably encouraging so far and then this is today's data actually for hospitalizations in South Africa uh, down slightly down slightly 9.13 9 uh, just over 9,000 people in hospital diagnosed with uh SARS coronavirus 2, which in South Africa know is all, 98% of that is Omicron. And uh, this is the amount of people in hospital, 9,000 for the population of um, 60 million. And relatively small numbers in intensive care, relatively small numbers in high care. And the uh, people requiring ventilation for the whole country, 249. This is at the moment, this is, this is data for the 24th of December. And uh, just over 1,400 in the whole country requiring oxygen. This is a dramatically different picture from what we had seen with the Delta wave. Now this is the most up-to-date information from the UK that I currently have. There we go, 300 people in hospital with Omicron, 24 deaths with and or with or from Omicron. We don't know if it's with, we don't know if it's and, we don't know if it's coincidental, we don't know if it's the cause, we just know it's 24 who died within 28 days of a positive diagnosis. But so far in England, 300 people hospitalised. It's a really pretty small amount so far. Looking good and, and South Africa are also looking pretty promising. So this was the uh, this is the South Africa site here. Do have a look at this. It's a very good site, actually. Um, the, the data's there. Um, you just need to click on that to expand it. And you can uh, pick out various other bits of data. This is the bits that we've been looking at. So a number of hospitalizations have, has been rising, but not dramatically so compared to previous waves. It's the key, is the key message there. Now, can I give you the next screen now? Probably not. Never mind. Right, so let, let's go on to look at the data now from... Um, so, so th there are all the references for that. Let's, let's look at Tim Spector now. So he's the next person that we need to talk to about this and I've just worked out how to do it 
So, um, oh, this is the data from the UK here. Um, second screen. There we go. Uh, and as we see, this this is the latest data here. So this is published on a daily basis. So later on today, we'll get the update. But th that, that information I've just given you there, the 300 and the 24, was the data for the 23rd of December. Now, uh, Tim Spector, um, COVID uh, symptom tracker app lead scientist, of course. Um, so um, Omicron. Similar cold type symptoms to Delta in the first few days. So the early features of Omicron are the same as the early features, at least in vaccinated people with Delta. And that is basically a common cold type features. Omicron, feature, uh, Omicron cases have less loss of the sense of smell and less of the loss of the sense of taste. So basically these can happen. Loss of the sense of smell can happen loss of the sense of taste can happen. It's just that it's um, less common with Omicron. Uh, having five or more symptoms less common with Omicron than Delta. So people are tending to have with, with Omicron, people are having fewer symptoms than they did with Delta. Now, we don't know this for sure yet, but what Tim Spector's data consistently found was that people who had more clinical features, more different symptoms in the first few days of the illness of the infection went on to get more severe disease. So the fact that people are getting less symptoms so far when they develop an infection with Omicron is positive in that it means they are likely to get less severe disease. If, if that trend is continued. So that, that's fairly promising from that data as well. Uh, more breakthrough infections with Delta uh, after two or three doses of the vaccine. So we're getting way more breakthrough infections. We know probably 10 times more breakthrough infections than we did with Delta. But of course, if it's milder, that matters less. But as we've said repeatedly, if a lot of people get it all at the same time, that could still be a problem for a period of time. But either way, this is going to happen quickly. This is going to happen quickly because it's so contagious. Uh, um, so co com common cold now less transmissible than Omicron, right? So Omicron is now more transmissible than the common colds which are around at the moment. It is spreading faster than common colds. This is how transmissible it is. Um, one or... One in two chance common cold symptoms will test positive for COVID. Well, there you go. That's what that Tim Spector Zoe data is saying. So if you think you've got a cold at the moment and you live in the UK, there's a 50% chance that is Omicron COVID. There's a 50% chance it's Omicron SARS coronavirus 2 COVID. So if you've got common cold features, get your lateral flow tests like I did just a couple of days ago tested i found i was negative but now if you've got common cold symptoms there's a 50 percent chance that that will come up positive in quite incredible quite 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 re quite incredible really uh therefore if you've got a cold test avoid people who have cold if you don't want to get omicron because what we need to do is instead of having the omicron infections go like this we need it to sort of go a bit more like that. We need to flatten it out a bit so that the very small percentage that are hospitalised can be easily coped with. Pings, uh, the, the app on the phone, um, now too slow to be effective. So basically the NHS app. I mean, obviously we would advise people to keep using it, but it's of limited value now because Omicron onset is two days. So the first symptoms of Omicron are coming two days after infection. So with Delta, you would be infected with uh, Delta and then you would get the first symptoms five days later. With Omicron, you get the first symptoms on average two days later. It's just too quick for the, for the NHS app. It's spreading too quickly. You need to be aware when you get these common cold type features. So much shorter generation time, people getting symptomatic much earlier. But Omicron will also run its course faster usually all over within four or five days. So much more like a common cold. Uh, infection risk after eight days, Professor Spector says, is negligible. So we don't need to is actually isolate for 10 days anymore. We can get people back to work. So eight days after the first symptoms, your antibodies and your immune cells will have got rid of essentially, we could say, all of the virus in your body that is capable of reproducing. 
therefore you will no longer be infectious. So negligible risk of infection after eight days. It's running a quicker course. Isle of Man, um, people are getting back to work earlier because um, they, they can go back to work, not after a period of time, but when their symptoms have resolved. So if the symptoms are resolved in three days and they've had two negative lateral flow tests, they can go back to work. So people could end up just isolating there for three or four days, as long as they test negative. Now, the most important thing I wanted to tell you there was that if you've got common cold symptoms in the UK at the moment, 50% chance it's covered. The other thing I wanted to tell you, uh, reinforce really, is the symptoms. Now, this is the Zoe data um, that Tim Spector and his team have collated from 17,000 Omicron cases. Most common feature is a runny nose. Second most common feature is a headache. Third most common feature is fatigue. Fourth most common feature is sneezing. Fifth most common feature is a sore throat. So you get those things, you think you've got a cold, but for 50% of us who have those symptoms now, in the UK, 50% of us will be um, COVID positive, SARS coronavirus 2, probably caused by Omicron infection. Now, I think, um, I think I might leave that there. I said the most important things I want to say. Now, the, the mainstream media is not covering Africa at all, really, which is remarkably disappointing. So we are. So we're going to get a report now from Wafafa about the situation in Africa. So Wafafa, thank you very much, my friend, and over to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's COVID-19 update. I'm here to just give you a brief report about Uganda and Kenya. Now, there has been a surge in the number of cases of COVID-19 in uh, these two countries since they reported uh, the Omicron variant in these two countries. Uh, with Uganda reporting a total of 502 cases a single day, which is the highest number of cases reported in a single day since the pandemic started in Uganda. In the same way, Kenya also reported a lot of cases in a single day. Uh, yesterday, that was about uh, 3,328 cases per single day. Now, uh, in this festive season, and since they first detected uh, the Omicron variant in these two countries, we've seen that the number of cases have increased drastically. Uh, in Uganda, we detected seven cases of a micron variant and they were all imported uh, cases. From that time, I have not yet gotten any information from the Minister of Health uh, whether there have been more cases of micron variant detected. Uh, but in Kenya, they detected the three cases, which were community cases, uh, which of course shows that there is community transmission in Kenya. And as you know, Uganda and Kenya, they are neighboring countries and people are from Uganda move into Kenya every day and the same happens uh, for Kenya. So as I said, there's a possibility that uh, we have now the micro variant in our communities. Now let me share with you the statistics for these two countries that will help us come up with a clear picture of the general situation of COVID-19 in these two countries. Uganda has uh, conducted a total of around uh, 2,078,188 tests of COVID-19 since the pandemic started, including uh, 5,863 uh, new like tests, the one they just conducted where uh, they found out 502 cases. Uh, we have a cumulative number of around 130,178 cases. We have a positivity rate of 8.5% and we have lost a total of around uh, 3,274 deaths. According to the information that I have on the day the Ministry of Health released this information, there was no new death so far. Uh, so what I've observed is that uh, yeah, the cases are increasing, but uh, they are mildly cases. 
we've not uh, received like overwhelming cases in the hospitals in the region where I'm staying uh, the hospitals are not overwhelmed so most of the people are being treated from home and few people have been admitted like out of the 502 we have only around 85 people who are in government hospitals like those ones who have been admitted but most of them are being treated from home uganda has administered a total of around uh, 10 million 121,220 doses of vaccines now this includes those who have received both the first and second dose and those ones who've just received a single dose uh we've not yet started giving booster doses yet in uganda as majority of the population have not received a single vaccine when it comes to kenya the minister of health kenya yesterday uh confirmed a total of around 3328 cases of covid 19 and they have uh conducted a total of around 2 million and 955,178 uh, tests since the pandemic started. Uh, they have uh, confirmed a total of around uh, 270,899 cumulative cases since the pandemic started. And they have a positivity rate of 29.7%. Uh, that means out of 100 tests they conduct around 29 people are found with COVID-19 and uh, they have uh, administered a total of around uh, 9,169,969 doses of vaccines and around uh, 3 million seven hundred. 22,540 people have received uh, their second dose of vaccines. In Kenya, they have also not started giving the booster doses as majority of the people are not yet vaccinated. I uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to today's COVID-19 update. I will see you in the next video. I love you all. See you. Thank you, Rafafa. Excellent update, uh, as always. Um, all be quiet. There we go. Now, the thing that got the thing that got me there um, that Rafafa's on the ground. He's a medical officer on the ground there, and um, they're, they're getting a in Uganda eight point five percent positivity. Now, even though they're not doing many tests, that positivity rate is high. That tells me there's a lot of community transmission at the moment in Uganda. Kenya, 29.7% positivity, even on a low number of tests. So again, it tells me there's a lot of community transmission in Kenya as well, potentially even more than in Uganda. So this is spreading throughout those countries. Um, and we can assume that it's spreading quickly. But so far, Wafafa is not seeing people getting sick, which is remarkably encouraging. Um, but of course, it's still early days and how this is going to pan out in a population which is very, very under vaccinated compared to Western countries and probably unexposed to previous forms of uh, SARS coronavirus too, as they have been in South Africa, is yet to be seen. There is a young demographic, of course, in Kenya and Uganda. That's going to be, we believe, even with Omicron massively to their advantage. But um my anxiety levels about Africa are not yet uh, allayed, whereas my anxiety levels about Western highly vaccinated countries are, are much lower than they uh, were. So uh, on that uh, point of optimism, um, let's let's leave it and have a have a good Christmas. And uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>